Good morning, my neighbors! <laughs> Well, good morning, you sexy mother hubbards. It's Friday, and it's time for an alternative paper review. First up to the eye this morning, who report on this vicious new MPOX strain first detected in Africa, which has now had its first case in Europe. World Health Organization have already declared it a global emergency, meaning your crazy anti-vaxxer Uncle Paul is already rubbing his hands together, getting ready to spout that crazy sh all over again, like, all right, <clears throat> ready for round two, Paul. <laughs> Time to shine. Now, although this sort of thing is often quite scary when you hear the WHO declare something a global emergency, there are still reasons to be somewhat hopeful. First, I have it on good authority that we can send the virus packing in 12 weeks. Second, if you're a fan of staying at home and putting your feet up, although there's unlikely to be any state-sponsored lockdowns with this, the symptoms are reported to be those horrible, unsightly, ghastly, bubbling up pox all over your skin. So if you were a fan of locking yourself away from civilization for a couple of weeks, completely removing yourself from your social circles, I mean, this thing has got you covered. Thirdly, with COVID-19, there was a lot of uncertainty and ambiguity. It was the early days. People didn't know who was more likely to get it, who was more likely to get it more seriously. If you were over the age of 70 and of South Asian heritage, was the likelihood that you were gonna die from it significantly high? There was a lot of that sort of stuff, right? <laughs> you had Educated politicians stood up behind podiums going like, well, we, we, we haven't got any definitive response yet from the science to tell us exactly why it is that aging, vulnerable, obese, junk food junkies riddled with heart disease are more susceptible to this other health problem. We, we haven't figured that out yet, but we'll get back to you as soon as we have. With MPOX, there is no such ambiguity. We already know that for the most part, it is transmitted through close physical sexual contact, meaning there are actually credible steps that you can take to avoid contracting this thing, like um, getting married. Over to the Daily Mirror now, who report on the death of Matthew Perry, who is eventually found to have died from an overdose of ketamine. 20 doses in one day, apparently. Anyway, now reports coming out of Los Angeles are that they've arrested a couple of medics, doctors, his support staff for facilitating his addiction. And that's why you got this headline here. It says, uh, ketamine queen held and, uh... I mean, is it just me or like ketamine queen? Doesn't that sound like a song by The Weeknd or Placebo? Finally, to the Daily Mail and its older, uglier, more racist and senile sister paper, The Daily Express, who wheel out the gangbusters line, once again in reference to our barely growing economy. Indeed, this is a story that GDP figures released yesterday portray a Great Britain exploding in economic strength to the tune of 0.6%. Doing little to dispel the idea that populist right-wing rags simply don't do substance, the Mail and the Express seek to perpetuate the idea that we are now experiencing some sort of boomtown golden era and that tax hikes will no longer be necessary and we could all keep 100% inheritance, winter fuel payments, a teddy bear and a blowjob. Back here in reality though, the United Kingdom is still in monstrous debt. I'm not kidding, by the way. Like if you want an illustration, if you want a mental image to help illustrate how bad the national debt situation is like you know when you're talking about a personal debt and you say oh they've, they've got me over a barrel you know unresolved personal debt finance loans all of that stuff well the united kingdom if you think of us we're over here and then you think of bondholders over there that's who we borrow money from right the bondholders have got us bent over a barrel our pants pulled down and then an eye-watering buggery session so no i'm sorry to be a bit of a killjoy but that is sort of you know what I do. But there is still going to be very, very, very little room for Rachel Reeves to start throwing around money like some sort of Caligulan fiscal carnival. Well, surely no need for tax hikes with our growing economy. <laughs> like, when did the Daily Express become somebody's elbow patches British Legion grandpa? Well, they say that the economy's going gangbusters. So I don't see why they've got to hike the taxes. <laughs> now, this is what gets me about these people. These people are supposed to be journalists. They're supposed to look at facts and figures and pros and cons and weigh it all up and get sources from both sides and then come out with something resembling the truth for their conclusion. But every time, every time, they just like, they take what's happened, like the actual news story, and then they go, oh, okay, 
How can we bend this and contort it? How can we fit this triangular shaped object through our spherical hole here? To make it fit our narrative, to cut taxes, to slash public services, to force a centre-right Labour Party down an ideological bent. How do we manipulate and mutilate this truth today? Honestly, give it another week. This MPOX thing will be a culture war issue. I promise you. You'll have teens and 20-somethings coming out with the symptoms. You'll have the express reading Brexity boomers like, oh, look at these kids. Look, they've all got the symptoms. It's because these kids today have got moral failings. That's the real disease. It's the moral failings of the youth today. Look at them. Look at them all. That's, that's why they're contracting this thing, because they're out there having sex with each other. Filthy, dirty, unprotected sex. We never had unprotected sex in my day. That's why there's so few babies. That's why there's a baby shortage. It's not down to the downside to feminism or ballooning inequality or the housing crisis or the astronomical cost of childcare. It's all down to the ethical black hole in the centre of the heart of every Remainer leftist. And if you ask me, they deserve it. Those ketamine guzzling, promiscuous Triters, Gen Z's generous fornicators should take their pocky penises for what they are. A plague from God as punishment for their evils. Guys, that's it from me. I'm actually off on holiday now from Sunday through to next Sunday. But I've lined up a few videos to keep you going in the meantime. It's just that it won't be, you know, like super topical. Just thoughts and feelings and observations on some other bits and bobs. But they'll be going out like every morning same time as I would normally do the paper review. Also, before I go away, it's Friday, right? So Friday nights, half past seven on YouTube, I do my live stream. So I will be on there tonight at half past seven. If you're free, join me for a beer or a glass of wine. Also, also, before I go, I've got a new clips channel. So if you're enjoying the podcast and you like those clips of me sort of, you know, ranting in my cabin, trying to make sense of the senseless formerly United Kingdom that we all reside in, then check the description below. There's links to everything like Patreon, YouTube community, but also like the Clips channel. It's all down there. So get involved. Until next time, I'm out this mother Hey yo, Star's alternative paper review. Coming in for you every day is the truth. Roasting the Tories, bring you the stories. A. Thompson talking blue in the room. Dude in the shed, big ears with a brew. Drunk off his head, it appears had a few. Age 42, saying what's new.